Hello, and welcome to the Jumpstart Podcast with Jeff Politics. I'm your host, Jeff Sauer. Today, for our 50th episode, we're going to briefly celebrate reaching a milestone for this podcast and talk about the road to get us here at this point. I believe I read a stat once that most podcasts will quit or end after about six episodes, so I'm glad we made it this far. And I actually think at 50, it's going stronger than ever. I have more energy for the podcast and just things keep on getting better each time we put one out here. But if I'm going to be completely honest, I was probably ready to quit after six episodes like a lot of the people that were out there, or at least make some changes. You see, the first eight or so episodes, I started out doing it weekly, and I was the one who was recording, scheduling the interview, arranging it, editing it, mixing it, all the stuff that goes into putting out a podcast. I was doing that, and it's a lot of work, no matter how good you are at these things. If you're going to do any kind of editing instead of just putting out the the podcast and if you're going to do any kind of production at all, it took me two to three days full time to produce it. And yes, I'm a perfectionist and I was doing stuff like getting rid of all the ums and the breathing noises and stuff like that. But I thought that I had to do a proof of concept, right? If I'm going to build a podcast up, I'm going to do this thing. I need to figure out how it works. I need to create an example of what I want in a podcast before handing it over to anybody. And I don't regret that, but I am glad that I got some relief in the process of, of going there. And so it took about three to four months to settle into a format that most of you have known for this podcast. So it took, you know, from going from weekly to bi-weekly, bringing in an editor and a producer, those things, it took a while for me to get to that point and to figure it out. But I think it was the right choice to do it. And along the way, I've tried several things. So I think I, when I started out, I had a spot for sponsors and was just reading off like sponsorships from products that I liked. So I was just endorsing them or telling people about them, sort of cut that out of the system. But I think I might be coming back talking right now about some kind of sponsorship for the podcast that would be running forward. So we might get some podcast sponsors. It wouldn't be intrusive or not very intrusive a little bit. Obviously, anything is more than nothing. I might maybe incorporating sponsors back into it. I think I quit in the first place because I just didn't have the time to go out there and find sponsors and, and solicit them. And then one of the guests was annoyed that I read a sponsorship on top of their ad. So it's like, okay, well, if guests are getting annoyed and I'm not even making money off this, I better stop doing it. But we do, like I said, there's some sponsorships on the table. More on that later. You'll, you'll know it once you see it because we'll be reading sponsorships. But I uh, haven't had any since about episode... I'm not going to say what episode because you're going to know which guest it was, but some, somewhere in the 20s or so, I stopped doing that with guests. And also, when I first started, I the first episode was with Rand Fishkin, and I had all the questions laid out that I wanted to ask him. So I had like sort of structured and researched and just asked him a bunch of questions that I wanted to ask. And that was sort of cool to do that. But then I stopped doing the questions because it seemed like they were getting answered in the interviews. So I do an, I do a question of like, how did education affect your, your ability to do marketing or how did you, you know, I'd ask these questions that were already answered. And so I would look through my list and I didn't really find a perfect time to answer them. So I sort of gave up on that a little bit. And I just mostly asked the questions based on what they're saying and what's going out there. So this podcast has never been researched at all. The only research I do is already knowing about these guests. So there's some research just from knowing about them, but I haven't, necessarily done a huge comprehensive research on them before getting started because I want to hear their story and I don't want my biases to get in the way. And so that's that's been an interesting way to go about it is whether we do questions and research. And I don't think that it's suffered because of not doing research. I think that a lot of times if you do too much research, then everything ends up sounding the exact same. So I'm trying to find a balance there between the exact same and just going with the flow. Next thing about it is scheduling guests has been a part of this thing. So we go over two weeks. Part of it was was the editing strain. It was a lot of strain on, on editing it and getting it going, but then also just finding the time to schedule guests and to get somebody to get a call going once every week was tough without somebody to schedule them, especially when my travel was getting in the way, you know, considering how inconsistent it is and where I'm located and where I'm, and I don't know where I'm going to be. So I think that will get better as we go forward, I definitely see it getting better as I get more stationary, which I think is going to be happening in the future at some point, then I can get scheduling going and I don't have to say, oh, I don't know what time zone I'm going to be in. So this this should hopefully help. And I have a wish list of people that I want to get on the podcast still. 
and just need to reach out to them and, and make it work because it's not just my schedule, it's other people's schedule. And when you have busy people, it's hard to find a time that intersects, especially when they're all over the world. The other thing that we've added is, you know, so the guests are going every two weeks and then we have the individual episodes with just me and the microphone every other week as well. And I think that's gone really, really well and get a lot of good feedback on both sides. So it seems like that's a good incorporation. Now I've considered carving this out into its own feed, the Jeff episodes. And, you know, so people who subscribed in the past don't say, where are the interviews? I'm still on the fence there. I, I'm right now I'm, I'm leaning towards no, not putting it into its own feed just because it seems like two podcasts every two weeks versus one podcast every week. I think that it would be better to just be one podcast every week instead of having somebody subscribe to two, but I'm open to ideas there. I, I have a lot of thoughts about the personal one and how I could make it different if it was just me talking about marketing stuff, but I also don't want to overcommit. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, I mean, I think a lot of people have given me comments that they really like the individual episodes. And so I haven't seen a lot of people say, I stopped subscribing to your podcast because it's not all interviews with experts. And so I think every other is still a good way to do it. And so, of course, I'm always open to ideas and suggestions and feedback from people. But that's that's where I'm at right now. It's fun. funny, the last episode, I had embedded a little thing in there. I thought Alitalia was going out of business and I've seen several tweets come in from people. So it's cool to see that you're all listening and, and sharing with me. It's sort of fun to, to do this. And as we had talked, the, the podcast metrics are not always there. So just getting a little bit of a personal connection is awesome. So thanks everybody for listening along. Hopefully you listen to this one too, even though it's going to be really short. Now, as far as you know, the scheduling piece, I've recorded this podcast. I recorded the first one actually when I was still living in San Francisco that was with Julian Coquet, even though it was episode three. It was the first one we recorded. Then I did Hawaii. That's where I interviewed Rand Fishkin. And I interviewed, I think, Sheena and Krista. I have interviewed several people from Hawaii. I remember interviewing people from Tahiti. can't remember who it was. I remember the, interviewing Cyrus Shepard when I was in New Zealand. That was a fun one because the timing was interesting between Seattle and New Zealand. Is actually It actually was remarkably convenient compared to these other ones that I've done. Australia, Italy, UK. I think we did one in Aruba. I might have done one in Costa Rica at one point. Argentina, Thailand, Portugal, the Azores, and a lot of crazy places. So I've, I've recorded this podcast from at least 10 different countries and navigated the time zones. I think the most embarrassing thing was when the US switched to daylight savings time before the rest of the world or after the rest of the world. And I actually showed up an hour early for a podcast and the person and I was like, why aren't you on here? And then they said, isn't it an hour from now? And I was like, oh yeah. So it ended up working out all right. The The guest was flexible, but that was a, that was a pain. So there's all kinds of different pain points that I did not anticipate in doing this and, and getting it out there, but, um, it has worked, you know, and things have gotten better over time. I think the quality of production has gotten better since zero took over. He's, he's our editor, producer, sound guy. He's the guy who's putting this all together for you. I think my ability to interview has gotten a lot better as we've gone forward, just because it's more time management and, and being able to, to get people going. Although I do think, you know, as I listen to other podcasts, the ones that are done in person, it seems like the guests, their actual responses are much more brief when it's person to person. So like if you listen to Mark Marin's podcast or I like the Bill Simmons podcast, if you listen to either of those, you know, ours tends to have somebody talk for a minute or two about something and going into detail. And then and then I'll go in and I'll chime in for 15, 30 seconds, and then it will go back to a couple minutes or sometimes several minutes of dialogue versus other, other interviews are a lot shorter. It's more of a, it's more of a conversation. And I think it's just the nature of neither of us can see each other. So I wonder how that would change if we did some kind of video piece of it or something, um, to go into it, but it has affected my ability to interview. That's what I'm getting at with this. And that is, you can't really see their face and whether they're like doing this because they think that I'm not speaking up enough or they can't hear me or if they're just not aware of how long something's going. And, and it's not necessarily a bad thing to have somebody talk for a minute or two. Actually, it's a good thing to get somebody to talk. There's nothing worse than having to pull answers out of somebody. But I'm saying from my ability to interview perspective, it is difficult to know when I should interject and cut somebody off or if I just let them go with it. And so that's, you know, it, it's still something that's evolving. And I think it would improve more to do it in person. But I have no plans of doing this in person. I think that would be very difficult. No, it would be impossible. 
But everything is better now. The editing has gotten better. I think we've gotten better equipment. This microphone that I use is better. There's still some, you know, some ups and downs and everything, but everything's better now than when we first started. No doubt about it. You know, I, I just thinking about the timing once a week is enough for a podcast for me. There's podcasts that I listen to. Like if they had 10 episodes a week, I'd listen to them all like the Bill Simmons one. Other ones, I'm like, man, why are they doing two episodes a week? I don't have time to listen to this. And I think it has to do with the amount of time going. So ours are usually about 60 minutes for an interview and then 30 minutes for a Jeff one. And this one will be probably less than 15 minutes. Um, but it just depends on, you know, if I was doing the 15 minutes, then I'd be able to do it daily. So I think that maybe 60 minutes of content over the course of a week is about as much as I'd want somebody to put out there. But there are a few exceptions, I assume but I'm not going to be the exception. Once a week is probably what I'm going to do. And if I went to daily podcasts, I'd probably go crazy. And if I did that, though, I'd do it on a different feed too. It would be more like marketing in your car. Marketing secrets now is what it's called by Russell Brunson. So I'm still digging the format we have right now, and I hope to use it into the future. And like I said, this is episode 50, and this is it. I'm just giving you a quick, brief overview of what we've done since episode 1 to 50. I'm glad we made it this far. I know we'll make it to 100, and I think we'll make it beyond that. Now, I see a lot of podcast feeds out there. They're, they're at episode 800, <laughs> and now that is that is something that ends up happening when you're doing two or three, four episodes a week. You know, doing it once every two weeks, it takes four years because it's 25 episodes a year. So we're at 50. I've been doing it since October 1 of 2015. So we're about a year and a half into this thing, actually more than a year and a half into it, and we're at 50. Um, now that we're up in the frequency, in theory, we would hit we'd hit 100 episodes on in May of or May or June of 2018. So we'll see if that happens. But that's it for this episode. Just wanted to give you a little bit of background as to where we've come from. For show notes, visit jefflytics.com slash episode 50. And I'll look forward to talking to you next week with an interview episode. Talk to you soon.